Okay, well, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start building our database by constructing the tables. Uh, we're going to base that data upon the data dictionaries that we built in a previous video. Um, what we, what you can see in front of you at the moment is the entrance screen to Microsoft Access. And there's one difference with Microsoft Access and all database programs that differs from uh, word processors and spreadsheets. And that's this part down here. That's the fact that Access is asking us to save the file now. Generally, when you open the program, it leaves you to save it at a later date if you wish to. And that's based upon the fact that if the program does crash, it's annoying that the fact that you haven't saved it and you may have lost some data. But in databases, data is so essential that the moment we create this, Access is already beginning to start saving data. So if we start adding data to a table, instantly it's being saved. That's because data is mission critical for businesses and therefore you need to be saving data at all times. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I've created a folder called Driving School Database. I'm going to call this one Driving School Database. Click on OK. There it appears there. I've selected blank and therefore click on it. Now, Access has gone off, it's built that part, it's taken me to this screen, and this is a horrible way of introducing the system, and it's one of those things Access has decided it's going to do, and what you can do is click at the top here and give a name, or type automatically type data into here. It's an appalling thing to do, um, it doesn't give you much control, considering how much detail we've got in our data dictionary, it's the wrong way of going about it. So I'm going to go up to the set square, pencil and ruler symbol up here, which is the design view. I'm going to click on that. It then asks me to save this, so I'm going to give it a name, uh, TBL underscore learner. TBL, this comes from the same convention that I was using for my field names, in that TBL is short for table, therefore I know how to refer to my tables. Underscore, so I don't use spaces, and everything is lowercase, so that I don't have to worry about, or did I put an uppercase here or anything else. I'm going to click on OK, and this page changes to design view. What I'm going to do is shove that over to the side here, and here is the learner table number one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type in learner ID because that's my first one here. I've got a P that tells me it's the primary key, but if I look, there's already a, pr a key symbol here. That means it's already the primary key. That's because this button's been switched on. If I click on that button, the key symbol disappears. And if I click on again, it reappears. It's simply a switch, but that means that is a primary key field. I don't put anything in description, but I leave this as auto number. Now, there are all the data types. We're going to be looking at those over the next uh, series of videos. But in the case of the auto number, I need to make certain things clear. An auto number is where the system assigns a value. When I start off with a database and it's empty, and the first record I put in, an auto number will put value 1 against it. It will put learner ID, in this case, to 1. The next record I put in will be given the value 2, and so on. These numbers being unique to each record. Now, a word of warning. Some people will say to you, if you delete a record and the auto number gets deleted, then you can realign your numbers rather than having 1, 2, 4, 9. You can realign all your records so they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Please don't do that. Don't ever do that. It's a dangerous thing to do, and I'm going to explain why with a small example. On the left-hand side, you can see customer ID and name. I have four customers, Mickey, Donald, Minnie, and Frank. On the right, you can see their account balances. Customer ID number 12, well, we don't know who that is, that's below Frank. And customer number 3, well, we know who that is, that's Minnie. Minnie has a debt of £1 million. So Minnie owes money. Now, Minnie disappears off the face of the earth and the account is deleted, but the debt remains on the records. Now, someone, when I come along and I want to set up a bank account, someone in the database department says, I'll tell you what, let's reallocate these numbers, because there's no point having this gap in the records, one, two, four, that makes no sense. So let's reallocate. So I get allocated Minnie's old number. 
The trouble is, because the records still exist in the other table, there is a risk that I will be assigned Minnie's debts, and therefore her data gets assigned to me. I can remove that completely by never, ever reusing numbers. Access will never naturally, and therefore we should never reuse the numbers. Don't do, I say don't do anything in description, but what I do here is I put instructor ID. Under data type, I can see that I've already said a number. I know it's number because it's a foreign key. The F tells me this is a foreign key, and if it's going to be an auto number as a primary key, then the foreign num foreign key, uh, data type for sorry the foreign key data type is always going to be number. So if you know the primary key that this relates to is is auto number, this one will be number. Now we come more clear uh, more clear. That's a wonderfully grammatically monstrous statement. This will become clearer later on. Under description. Now we can enter something. Descriptions, people think we might put in something like um, this is the instructor or the usual instructor's name. But actually, that's not what this is about. This is to help, this is the prompt for the user. So I need to enter something to help them along. Because of the way I'm going to construct this, I know that the foreign key is going to be please select the usual instructor for this student. Now here's a plea to you. I've started off with please because contrary to popular belief, my users of my database do not have to do what I've told them to. I don't have to say select the usual instructor. That's a bit harsh. Why don't I be a little bit polite and say, please select. So let's add a little politeness into our records. It simply makes the day a little bit sweeter. I don't put any F at the side here. There's no special symbol for foreign key. That's as far as it goes. There's my prompt. And now I can start to put new fields in. And in a moment, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so what we've done now is I've added all the fields from both of the sheets from the data dictionary. Um, I'll have a look at that in its entirety. And what we can see here, very simply, is that I've entered all the pleases and I've actually selected the data type. So DOB, the date of birth is a date, the date pass is a date. The theory, which is simply have they passed the theory test, which is a yes, no. I've got a memo here as well. So everything that we identified in our data dictionary, so there's the first page and there's the second one, we can see we've got on our table here the key points, the data type, the field name. Those are the two things we've got. The description we've added in for further details. There are other things that we need, though. We have all this data over here. Now, certain things that we're going to look at, and this is going to require some swapping between the two. But let's just have a look at the first name. Where do we enter this data? Well, look down here. This is the section we're interested in. We've got caption. So if I have a look at my first sheet, I can see for learner, for sorry, usual instructor, I've got usual instructor. So instructor ID should be usual instructor. And Stra first name should be name, Stra last name should be last name. So all I'll do is go there and under caption put usual instructor. This is what will appear to the user of my database. So the user of my database will see usual instructor. A really strange thing called instructor ID. More so with first name and last name. These make much more sense than Stra first name and Stra last name. So there's last name. You'll also notice above that there's the field name, and I had that as 30 and 20. I'm not going to worry about a user instructor's length. It actually doesn't have a length, it has a field size, and I'm leaving that as a long integer. There's no reason to temp tamper with that because that's a foreign key. So I can go through those, but we've also got other ones. If you remember, when we look at the data dictionary, we actually have got a number of characteristics here. For example, the postcode, those text, 
was set to a field size of 9 and was given this strange code here. So if we go to Pode, we've got a field size of 9 and under Input Mask, I put exactly what we decided. And let's just make sure that's correct. So LL09. Now I own oh, I'm put 09 and it should have been 90. But notice also there's a slash has been added. I didn't put that in, access did. And the slash means this is the backslash on the left hand side of the keyboard, and it simply means the space is a space. Leave it in there. So it's saying the next character after that slash is a natural character leave it as it as, as it appears I can put into there postcode and that adds the details telephone number is the same we've decided on 15 you'll notice the slashes will appear so when I put a, a bracket 1 2 3 4 5 bracket space 1 2 3 space 1 2 3 as soon as I click away down to caption it will put the slashes in some quotation marks because I've got bracket space so it's saying okay this is a bit of a string and then a slash again to signify the space don't worry about those little tweaks because those are access specific um, but just put in the normal code it will sort it out for you the caption in this case is telephone number and I've got those so at the moment I've got those key features in here now let's just check if there's any more on sheet number one and I've just got to set these all to 30 which is street house numbers 20 so all I've got to do is house number goes to 20 street 30 locate 30 town 30 and then county 30 we've already done the postcode we've already done the telephone and therefore if I look at that I actually have got everything in there I need so I can close that one down knowing I've got that one finished sheet number two is a little bit different I've got the mobile number and I've got the date of birth now as regards the date of birth I actually can decide its format by choosing format at the top here and identifying the format I like. Now I personally like that one. So I'm going to go for the long date and the caption will simply be date of birth. Notice I've skipped mobile. That's because I'm doing uh, I'm showing you what I'm doing but I don't feel that I need to do that at this stage. But obviously if I was doing this for real I would do. The same is going to be true with license. I'll do that much later on date pass test just what I've just done with it. I don't need to worry about the field size because I've already defined that by long date so that's sorted the memo MMO notes becomes memo that's already sorted so I've got this one here level and what I've got is I've got four things beginner test retake or disqualified so I want to and therefore and advanced and how to do this one is this one if I go back to here is stra level and stra level is here so how do I build that well actually the simplest way is to look at the data types we've used text we've used memo we've used date and time we've used number we've used auto number clear what currency is but right at the end is look up wizard what I'm going to do is click that and a wizard will begin not the one with a pointy hat going <laughs> I don't know how many wizards go, but some of them might do. Anyway, I have two choices. I can either look the data up in an existing table. Well, I've only got one table, and the data's not in those. So I will go for the next one. I will type in the values. These are for fixed values. So if I was going to have the days of the week, I'd use this bottom option. I only have four options. If I have a look at this again, I have first one, beginner, second one, test retake. So in this one, I will enter. Oops beginner go down next test retake go down one more I've now got disqualified retake and advanced so disqualified retake and advanced 
and I click on next because I've got all four that I need and I'm going to tell it to limit it to the list so don't allow anyone to add anything new to this list they can't add a new data, piece of data what that would be if I didn't tick that then if someone decided there was a new uh, level then they could select it either from my four or type in a new one and that new one will be added into the record. I don't want that, I simply want to only allow them that choice of four. I click on finish. Boolean's relatively straightforward, it's simply a tick box. So strut transmission has two types. If I look back here, manual and automatic. So let's set that. Only two choices. It's a lookup wizard. I want to type the values next. Automatic. Oops, can't type really can't type automatic and manual limit to list finish what has that actually done well I'll show you what that's actually done let's have a look at the back there it is automatic manual all of this stuff has been set up by access let's look at the text that we haven't altered so let's go to mobile and look at that's the only thing under lookup but if we look at our level We've got loads of data in there, and if we look at our transmission, we've got loads in there again. We will be editing this later on with other characteristics, but let's not worry about that at the moment. So we've entered all this data in. The only thing I haven't done with these two is set their size, 9 and 19. So if I go back to general this, I can set that to 9, because the maximum length of anything is 9, since it's auto the word automatic. And the longest word in there was disqualified retake, which is 19. Remember to put the caption in, level, and automatic manual. Let's just check I've got those correctly. Actually, it was manual automatic, so I should turn that around. And that was pass theory, sorry, that was level so that's perfectly fine but because it's a demonstration I'm not going to swap those around if this had come from my study into a, an area if my customer had told me manual automatic then that's exactly what I would put but this is only an example what I'm going to do now is save that table I'm now going to view it just to see what new data will look like and what I've got I can't put anything under usual instructor at the moment but if I go along if I look at date of birth, first of all, when I click in there, I've actually got a date picker. So I can decide what date I have there. If I look at telephone number, I can see that I've got the format of a telephone number. Same thing with a postcode. I actually have lines in there which I don't have anywhere else. If I go along to level, there's my Boolean theory. And obviously I haven't changed that one, but it's simply a tick box. But here's my level. I can choose which ones. Yes, it's cut short. We can sort that later. I can choose the automatic or manual. So that lookup has given me this option here. Now, I'm entering a record hit now, and that is being saved. Look what it's given us. Learner ID, record number one. Now, I don't want this record, so I'm going to press escape. And notice, it's gone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing a new record in here. So first name. Mickey and notice the learner ID is automatically being given to so I've already used up two of my records um, just doing this example so do expect your learner IDs don't expect them to start at one because when you first start building you're going to put records in and delete them it doesn't matter they don't have to correlate anyway I'm going to press escape press escape again and that deletes that so we've created our first table from it's come from our data dictionaries we can see that we've ended up with the same thing yes I've still got more to do but I can go off and do those and then later on I can add more tables build the relationships and we're all sorted the next video is actually not about the relationships we'll come to that later on but it is about queries and how we can use queries to create the system but until then see you later